Hey Aucklanders, you know that boundary that's been keeping you locked in? Well, if Dr Ashley Bloomfield had his way, it could have been opened last week. But only when the traffic light system switched on and official advice was to hold off longer on that. As Political Way, a reporter Amelia Wade explains, the government's opted to pick and choose which health advice they follow. For 112 days, 18 hours, one minute and counting, Aucklanders have been locked up and they've been missing a lot. My grandchildren. It's my mum's 60th. My beach house. My sister's having a baby next week and I'm going to miss that. The cuddles oh. I've missed. But according to the top doctor, those cuddles could have happened as soon as the traffic light system turned on. At that point, we felt that the boundary could then be, be removed. Although the official health advice was to wait even longer to turn the traffic lights on. Ashley Bloomfield told the Waitangi Tribunal he actually wanted the traffic light system to kick in across the country a minimum of two weeks after Auckland DHBs hit 90% fully vaxxed. We'll be waiting potentially up till Christmas to move the country into the traffic light framework if we were following the health advice exactly as it was presented. Because when the government ditched their 90% target and switched on the traffic lights anyway, Bloomfield said the hard boundary, that's including vax passes or tests, around Auckland should be removed because there will be no public health justification to maintain it. Put another way, the boundary around Auckland has served its purpose. For the most part, our advice is taken actually in toto. Occasionally there are differences, but that is right. But I think the spirit of what we're working towards remains the same. The opposition just wants it now. We shouldn't just let this thing go on for another week. The Prime Minister could make a decision today to say, let's release that hard border, let's do it. Doubling down on his second day in the leader of the opposition seat. How are Kiwis expected to get ahead under a government that keeps them locked down longer than needed? Mr Speaker, the only uh, advice that I have seen suggesting that we have kept uh, Auckland locked down longer than needed is from the leader of the opposition. Defending the government's COVID defences. How said we could simply lift it. Our view was that the rest of New Zealand would appreciate additional measures to stop the spread of COVID-19. But, Mr Speaker, it would be keeping in the members' let-it-rip strategy with COVID. Aucklanders just keen to rip up the boundary. Well, Amelia is joining us now. Amelia, why is the government ignoring Dr Bloomfield's advice? Yeah, it's not so much that they're just straight up ignoring Dr Bloomfield, but they're picking and choosing which advice they like. On some points, they're being more conservative, like requiring vaccine passports or negative tests to get through that Auckland boundary. But on other points, the government's opted to be looser, like switching on the traffic lights before we're 90% vaxxed. Gone are the days of following public health advice to the letter. Now it's political. Amelia Wade, live from Parliament. Thank you.